Everton. Three minutes played, it's a chance for Crystal Palace already, Orsellini on the ball, using his great dribbling skills to turn his defender and have a lot of room to finesse it into the back of the net. 1-0 to Crystal Palace already. Little later, another chance for Palace here, it's Zaha passing it to Orsellini, Orsellini scouting out Brahim on the edge of the box, Brahim cuts inside and decides to take it himself and into the back of the net it goes, 2-0 already against Everton. So let me explain, my mom is talking to me, so I'm trying to focus on both what she's saying and what's happening in the match i know it's a really stupid excuse but that's actually what happened love you mom 2-1 loss against everton the fa cup and now it's time to look at the table once again before the start of february we're still currently league leaders we're tied with manchester city and liverpool but we do have the better goal differential but to round off the top five it's palace city liverpool chelsea and then arsenal spurs I know we've seen this so many times before, but are EA ever going to fix that? Chance for Spurs early on into the match, it's Harry Kane trying to fool our defenders, brings it to him, Dombele, back to Harry Kane. Harry Kane still trying to create some space for himself, decides to take the shot pretty far out, and it's a pretty simple tip from Farinas. 37 minutes played, a chance for Palace, it's Kunde to fourth, and Williams way into the midfield, he's dispossessed by a Spurs defender, it goes to Harry Kane, and luckily enough, he misses the goal completely. Now a chance for us in the 41st minute, our first chance, it's Orsellini seeing a running David Boateng, Boateng is gonna take the shot himself and nearly scores, what a blinder that would have been, but it's still no now. 46 minutes played now, it's Ndombele on the ball, get the hell out of my face! Into the second half we go, it's Atal on the ball leading this attack, he decides to take it himself, cuts inside, takes the shot near post, and it's a great save by Hugo Lloris. Now another chance for Spurs, it's Ben Davies to Mendez, Mendez on the wing, he crosses it in, it's not enough room for Mora, so he heads it down to Harry Kane, and once again, another great save by Farinhas. But on the following corner, it's Harry Winks, he gets tackled by Brahim, but then he's tackled by Mendez. Winks gets the ball back, it's to Ndombele, back to Mendes, to an open Mora, and Lucas Mora has made it 1-0 for Tottenham. But Spurs weren't done with us just yet, but Atal is gonna stop the attack by Hung Min Son, he passes it to Tomas Partey, and here comes the counter-attack, it's happened quite rarely as of late, but Zaha all by himself, and the classic Zaha 1-on-1 -on -one versus the keeper ends up with Zaha scoring once again another goal, and immediately after the first goal, we equalize. Last kick of the match for Spurs here. It's the only chance to possibly find the winner here. It's Get the hell out! Welcome, Paris Saint-Germain, to Selhurst Park. Oh, we're so f***. 24 minutes into the match, a chance for PSG already. It's Van de Beek to Cavani, back to Van de Beek, back to Cavani, back to Van de Beek. Then he passes it to Mbappe, who takes the shot, and it's a good save by Wilker Farinas. On the following corner, it's a cross into Cavani, and it's a very good save by Wilker Farinas. It was straight at the keeper, so I probably shouldn't say very good save. But anyways, it's a counter-attack now for Palace. It's a Yusuf Atal on the ball, and Yusuf Atal, who does he see? Brahim, who has somehow snuck his way behind the back four. No one around him, and Brahim, you could be a legend if you score this, and he does. It's 1-0 to Crystal Palace against Paris Saint-Germain. Imagine being owned by practically the the entire country of Qatar and you still can't even reach the semi-finals. I may have spoke too soon. 60 minutes into the match though, it's an interception by one of our defenders and Zaha on the end of it. He passes it to Inaki Williams, to Orsellini, and Orsellini passes it to an on-fire Brahim who gets past his defender and gets it past the keeper. It's 2-1. Brahim has become an absolute palace god amongst everyone. And did, did we even see this happening? 
I didn't. 78 minutes played now, Cavani dispossessed by Vinagre, and Vinagre with a ton of green to run towards. He passes it to Milivojevic, brings it to Orsolini, passing it to Nyaki Williams, pokes it to Orsolini, and thanks to PSG attacking and just not having anyone in the back, it is 3-1 to Crystal Palace. A goal and an assist for Ricardo Orsolini, a star performance for both him and Brahim. And just like that, 3-1, just showing you that PSG, whenever they're seen as favorite they really aren't. Leicester City. So fast forward to 91 minutes played. Zaha on the ball. He inches towards the edge of the box, cuts inside, passes it. <laughs> Now Manchester United. Into the second half, a counter-attack for Crystal Palace. It's Ricardo Orsolini. Brings it to Youssef Atal. Atal with a ton of room to run. He decides to cut inside. Pass it to Orsolini. Passing it to Nyaki Williams who takes the shot. It's saved by De Gea but then Orsolini off the rebound. It's 1-0 to Crystal Palace. 80 minutes now. Another counter-attack for Crystal Palace just to put a dagger in this one. It's Naya Kirby to Milivojevic. Milivojevic with that red laser eye vision. Bringing it to Zaha somehow. And Zaha on off the half volley, puts it in the back of the net, and it's 2-0 to Crystal Palace, just like that. So who are we facing next as we are looking at the table? Well, that would be Liverpool, the league leaders right now. So if we manage to get a result against Liverpool, which we definitely do need if we want to continue our journey to getting that league title possibly, we have to more than likely beat them. But before we look into that, let's just look at the Youth Academy. So Lewis Turner. About the same. Michele Ricci has upgraded again. He's 48 rated. Benedict Adekunde, still 61 rated. Still same potential. Federico Guidi, still the same. Denis Nuapa, looking pretty good actually. 63 rated and his potential is quite good. And then finally, a new addition to the Youth Academy is Andrew Shagari. 62 rated, 69 to 96 potential. Looks promising. And now, Liverpool. 12 minutes into the match, it's a counter-attack for Palace, just a signature counter-attack. Orsolini receiving it from Milivojevic. Orsolini then goes into the box and gets fouled in the box. And once again, it's another penalty for Crystal Palace. So hopefully Milivojevic won't miss this one, so he'll bury it. 15 minutes now, another chance for Palace. We're dominating Liverpool so far. It's Milivojevic on the edge of the box now. He passes it out to Orsolini, who takes the shot first time, and it's a great save by Alisson. 22 minutes played, finally Liverpool on the attack. It had been such a long time for them to actually develop their first clear attack here, but it's Robertson. He passes out to Kaita, and Kaita is just gonna do two of our defenders, maybe even three, take the shot. It's a great save by the goalkeeper. 49 minutes played now, it's Tomas Partey to Orsolini and Orsolini he sees Brahim making that run Brahim kicking the ball ahead of him and gives him that space to put it in the back of the net it's 1-0 to Crystal Palace but right off kickoff Liverpool with the attack they were pissed after that first goal Caeta now he passes out to Zabata to Roberto Firmino between two defenders somehow some way finds a cross to Mo Salah all by himself and it's one all. 59 minutes played now, another attack for Palace. We need three points. We don't need a draw, we need three points. And Tomas Partey is trying to scout someone out. It's Inyaki Williams with beautiful footwork. It's blocked by Kimpembe the first time, but not the second. It's 2-1 to Crystal Palace just like that. 67 minutes played based off of a failed attack by Liverpool. Palace on the counter attack once again. It's Tomas Partey somehow outrunning two defenders, including Alexander Arnold, and he puts it in the back of the net. Probably, hopefully, the dagger for this match. But you know, sometimes realistic things come into play, and one of those things would be me, well, screwing up. But luckily enough, we win 3-2 against Liverpool at home. We no longer have to face Liverpool in the season, which I'm quite glad about. And what does that mean? Well, another three points, and the table once again flips on its head. So, after the Liverpool match, everything has increasingly gotten more intense. But as you can see, we are now above Liverpool. But to round off that top five, actually, why not just the top three? Because that's all that matters at this point. It's City with 72, but with the game in hand, us with 72, and Liverpool with 72. This title race is incredibly intense right now. And now it's time to take the plane trip to Paris to face Paris Saint-Germain. Hopefully we can maintain the aggregate score or even improve it 
and advance to the next round. PSG with the first attack, but it's intercepted by Atal, then he's tackled, and then another interception, this time by Thomas Partey. He brings it to Brahim, back to Thomas Partey, to Inyaki Williams, who outruns all the PSG defenders, and I mean all, and he has all the room to improve this aggregate, and... The keeper saves it. PSG once again trying to attack. It's Cavani. He's intercepted, but then Van de Vick takes a shot. It's saved, and then Cavani gets a shot, and it's also saved. I don't even want to tell you how many times I actually had to redo commentating that highlight because I just kept messing it up. Once again, Palace somehow finding an attack. It's Milivojevic this time, passing it to Tomas Partey, to Orsolini, back heel to Inaki Williams outside of the box, and it's a good save by the keeper. Right before the end of the half, another chance for PSG. It's Milik once again on the ball. He's trying to find some way of attacking it's Neymar now but Neymar is tackled by Foyth and well that would be the end of that PSG attack fast forward to a little later into the second half now as we contain PSG for quite a while but it's Van de Beek off the post and we got pretty lucky there now 77 minutes played it's another attack for Palace it's Milivojevic to once again Inaki Williams and Inaki Williams gets fouled by Marquinhos and what does that mean well it was um denial of an opportunity of scoring a goal so in the uefa handbook or whatever referee handbook that is a red card why do i sound so entitled right now yeah I, I don't know psg are now desperate for a goal they need two within five minutes practically chupa moting on the ball not the man you'd really want to rely on but suso now he takes the shot is blocked then kunde is dispossessed another shot by van de beek and once again, another save by Walker Farinas. And oh dear god, thank god that match is over. But just like that, boys, we're into the quarterfinals. It's a Cinderella story for us, and hopefully it continues. West Ham. 32 minutes into the match, the first chance for Palace here. It's Williams to Orsolini, and Orsolini is just going to put it in the back of the net. It's just way too simple for the Palace attack. And then 42 minutes played, it's Zaha trying to beat his defender, and he does. He then cuts inside. He sees Inyaki Williams running away from his defender and he puts it in the back of the net. 2-0 to Palace, just like that. Next match, Fulham. Now last time we faced Fulham, we beat them 5-0 away from home. So... My expectations are pretty high for this match. It took a little longer to really find the first goal, but it managed to happen as Orsolini in the 39th minute sweats it to Inyaki Williams and it's 1-0 to Palace just like that. And then right before the end of the half, it's Orsolini once again, though this time he gets tackled by defender, but it goes right to Brahim, to Tomas Barty, passing it back to Orsolini. Orsolini with a nice little pass and, well, Inyaki Williams is going to finish that. Without a doubt. Now into the second half, 50 minutes played, it's Tomas Partey. He sees Brahim making that run inside, and Brahim makes it three. Just a little later, another Fulham mistake leads to another attack, and it's Inyaki Williams to Brahim. Takes the shot, it's safe, but then Inyaki Williams makes it a hat trick for himself. It's 4 0 to Palace. And just to replicate what we did last time, it's Tomas Partey. He passes it to Jordan Ayu, who just got subbed on, to Jeffrey Schloop, who just got subbed on and it's 5-0 to Crystal Palace just like that hmm these guys just won't go away will they yeah! 